Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Kirby. That's Alex over there. Today, we're going to start a new uh, trend here. We're going to call it youth money. We're going to have uh, people who's coming from the younger generations that want to ask financial questions. Uh, today, we have Valsum. He's right there. Hey, how's it going, uh, Valsum? How's it going, everybody? How's it? Going good, going good. And then, so for everybody, for the audience listening, what we're trying to do is, you know, incite the youth to look into uh, learning about financial literacy and things like that. Um, Valson reached out to me about a week ago and he had a, a really like a, we want to call it a project thesis or not even project thesis. He had, he saw um, a organization that he was very interested in. He saw a video on YouTube about the rise and fall of the iconic brand and he wanted to ask questions about it. So I figured no other place no better place to exit but on here. So with all that being said, uh, Alex, do you got anything you want to say before we jump it off or we can jump right into it? We'll, we'll jump right into it. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. And today, the iconic brand that we're talking about is Kmart, the rise and fall of Kmart, Kmart, Sears, and things like that. And um, so first off, Valson, we're going to talk about some things. So what made you interested in the video that you've seen about the Kmart rise and fall oh uh, i just saw like maybe just like a couple of youtubers going along like going to the last kmart's available on earth okay and then what what you do after that after you've seen that you just start looking I, more I, into like, it? Search. I like yeah i look more into it so what made you interested in, in kmart is that one of your favorite stores or a store you used to go to yeah i used to go to that store oh, okay all right so yeah, so for for people that don't know, Kmart Kmart was an iconic brand. It's been out for uh, over a hundred years. I believe it's a hundred years. We didn't reach that that pinnacle of it. And I um, I think it was eighteen ninety nine. Is what I was nineteen ninety nine. So we well over a hundred years. And then so what happened is Kmart iconic brand for people that my age and older, they know exactly what uh, Kmart is. It was. It's today's, you know, Walmart, it's today's Target, it's today's um, Amazon and things of that nature. I mean, but pre-online orders, but it was the it was the place to go for everything but groceries. But later on, they added groceries. But to get affordable, affordable stuff for especially for middle and low income income families, that was the place to go. That was the hub. Um, but as we walk through it, as, as we walk through it, uh, we're going to see, you know, what were some good things and what were some bad things about it? And going for that, going with that, um, when it comes to retail brands, the biggest thing is learning about the advertisement of the brands and how the brands, you know, brought themselves to where they are today. I mean, branding is a big part of it. So with all that being said, Velson, we're going to get to your first question. So what you got? Um, I got like, in what ways did like the advertising affect the customers, like the Kmart's advertisements? Okay, Alex, you want to go first or you want me to shoot it? Um, I briefly know on what happened with Kmart. I just found out from Kirby that Kmart um, was part of the Sears thing. Uh, mm -hmm. From what I was reading, um, Kmart couldn't compete with Target, Walmart, Amazon, uh, stores like that. So I'm sure their advertising wasn't directed in the sense that it should have been um, towards the e-commerce and that new, the new era that we're in. I'm assuming, I don't want to really say that's exactly what it was, but that's what I kind of got from what I was reading. All right. Well, so the, what, what Alex is trying to say in a nice way is he's not, he's not old as I am. So he don't know anything about <laughs> Kate Martin advertising because by the time he came of age, he didn't know nothing about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way to just say I'm old. But all right, so late. So me growing up, me growing up, the only place that my family shopped like for clothes, for video game. I mean, I, yeah, video games. They did to have Atari's video games, toys, and things like that was Kmart because that was the our dollar can go the longest way. Like you know, a hundred dollars to buy a whole bunch of stuff instead of going to higher name brand places and our dollar not being able to go the longer mile. They had layaway and different things like that. Now they call it buy now, pay later. But neither here nor there. That's where the most middle class and uh, poor families went to uh, go at it. And 
you know, Kmart, they advertised to those those people that was looking for uh, low cost items to, you know, satisfy, you know, birthday, Christmas, New Year's, um, all things across the spectrum, school clothes, the whole nine. It was, that's Kmart is where it went. And then, but when they advertise, so they advertise to that group of people coming out. And then, you know, fast forward and now to this new day and age and era of, you know, the Amazons and the, you know, the Walmarts of the world. What happened is their advertisement got better. Walmart and Amazon advertisement got better. Kmart still, you know, stayed in their, their lane that they was in. So as traffic drew more to Amazon, drew more to Walmart, Kmart never adjusted their, their advertising plan to let people know that they were still relevant. I mean, it's a couple different reasons why they didn't do it, but that's really how it affected them. The, the first thing about advertising and about retailing is you have to let people know that you're there. If people don't know that you're there, they will go look somewhere else. And like I said, I, I would use Kmart, you know, when I was young and I was born in the 80s, my parents before that used Kmart and their, you know, parents before that used Kmart also. But then as time evolves or gets, you know, further on, companies have to adjust to the times that we're in and, and Walmart wasn't able to, to do that. Gotcha. What else you got for us? Um, Like when it was competing with Walmart, how did it like lose market share against Walmart? Okay. Alex, want to take that? Losing market share to Walmart? Like, are you saying like, why did the stock drop compared to um walmart stock or yes yes he's talk, he's talking more of he's talking more of market share like uh customer like the number of customers going to came walmart instead of Kmart. okay i would just kind of feedback off of uh what kirby was saying just walmart started expanding and as we um well I, at least as you and uh, me and kirby know i don't know if you know but Walmart was a huge competitor back when they first started and they put a lot of stores out of business. Um, so I can see how Walmart's expansion and their growth and their competitive nature where they were making, I believe the profit was 25 cents on every sale just because they're selling quantity. I'm sure, you know, the a mass amount of sales would have stolen customers away from Kmart, um, which would have stolen, you know, stolen business there. Yeah, and and Alex was spot on. So how they lost market share was, like Alex mentioned, that the profit margins in Walmart still to this day are very small, very small. Meaning that if they bought something, if if Walmart bought something to put on a shelf that cost five dollars, they selling it for five dollars and ten cents. Where in Kmart's instance, they would buy something that cost five dollars and they would try to sell it for five, ten, fifteen dollars, you know, to get a multiple because they they didn't have that. They didn't have a uh they didn't have they didn't have a model of thinking of getting capacity to retain their customers at a very, very low rate. So with that, so the cost of goods started going up. So let's say that item that they bought five years ago cost five dollars, now it costs eight dollars, and then went from eight dollars that they bought it for. So now they're trying to sell it for 16, 24, 32 dollars to get a, a multiple on their their profits. But Walmart never did that. Walmart figured that. We will uh, sell as many items as possible with a low profit margin, and then that's why their numbers eventually, because Kmart, because Kmart was you know searching for the bigger profit, Walmart just kept their profit margin margin thin. Which and the inevitable thing that happened is Walmart prices became lower than Kmart prices, and then that's why more people went to Walmart. And then there's some other things like quality control and stuff like that, but. That was the main reason why people shifted to Walmart and away from Kmart. All right. All right. Um, another question. In like, mm -hmm. say like the next few years, like would Kmart like still be around or will it be like out of the retailer list completely? I would think it's already out. I haven't. I mean, I don't know how many stores were left. Isn't it like four stores left or something like that? Yeah, there's still like four stores left. Yeah, I, I think they're on their way out. 
Um, I, I think within the next five, 10 years, that's just my opinion. I would think within the next five to 10 years, um, they would be gone. They would have to do something revolutionary to come back into the game. Yeah, I I, I don't give it 10 years. I say less than that. I say two to two to five years. Right. Uh, those four stores will be obsolete and they will be no longer in existence. Um, just like Sears. I mean, but so if you don't know that the owner of the, the same owner of Sears, I don't know if you know Sears department store, that's another iconic historic brand of American history. The same person who owns Sears owns Walmart and both Sears and Walmart is close to liquidation and all of their stores closed. I believe it's something like okay. three, three to eight Sears stores still left out there on the market also. So yeah, those stores will be obsolete in that time frame. I say I give it two to five years or less. I think you meant to say Sears and Kmart. You said Walmart. No, Sears and Kmart. Please forgive me. <laughs> no, right, go ahead. I just don't want to confuse the audience. But yeah, um, right. yeah Sears and Kmart. Yeah. All right. How could it like um go bankrupt after it being around for like such a long time? Like you said, like a hundred years or so. How did it go bankrupt? Good question. So if as we were talking about before we turn on the video, um, Eddie Lampert is the owner um, of Sears, who I was, who Sears owns Kmart. Is that correct, Kirby? And so Eddie Lampert, what he had done was um, he had put debt obligation from his holding company. I, I believe, wasn't it at first he had rose, he had owned the, the majority share in, in um in Sears, and then he had began to put debt obligation against Sears from his holding company to Sears. It's his um his uh equity investment company, yeah. right? Or not his holding company. I'm sorry, I meant to say hedge fund. Um, his company put debt against Sears, and from there he began to drain all of its ass assets, basically just transferring out its assets. And I think the uh, the debt he had against Sears was uh, something crazy, like 20% interest or something. Is that correct? I don't want to misstate it, but yeah, it's some, something that some, it was, it was a straight, it was a insane uh, structure on how it was done, right. but it makes, it makes sense, especially with the vulnerabilities of both companies. Right. He basically just went in people like you could read, uh, read different articles and people describe it. Like he just went in and like pillaged the company, like took everything and drained it. A lot of people say that he left it like a hollow horn or something like that. A hollow, I forgot how you how they describe it, but it just took everything that belonged to those stores. And there were some pretty big name brands that are very common in like household name brands from Sears that now belong to his um, hedge fund. You know, like the Martha Stewart's of the world and things of that nature. That was that was part of Sears. I forgot the other they had. I think it was like Crashman or something like Crashman, that. Uh, that's right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. And, I mean, Eddie Lampert, he he did what he did. I mean, but back in the day, back in the eighties, they used to call these guys corporate raiders. Corporate raiders is people that go in, suck all the equity out of the company, and then uh, live. With the, I mean, first buy the company, then you know liquidate the company, and you know make the companies obsolete. Um, Carl Icahn, who's still a big time investor, now they call it uh governance investors or um uh or some or some other term, I can't think of the name right now, but or they call them you know um the term just slipping from me, but it's the same thing, corporator. Uh, and and you know, they try to turn turn, comp turn companies around, but a lot of these equity equity investment firms, they were just going in and buying the equity of the company and then liquidating all assets. Like in Eddie Lampert's situation here with, you know, Sears, uh, what what he tried to do was, like you said, Alex, he bought equity stake in a, in a company, uh, massive equity stake ownership in the company. And then he uses uh, hedge, not hedge, yeah, hedge fund, that's what we call it, hedge fund, and then started uh, loaning money to Kmart, loaning money to Sears, and then the debt obligation that was on it, the interest rate that was on it was based on the credit rating of the two entities. No other place would give them debt. So he just uses hedge fund to do it. And then, of course, for people that don't know, the the 
person who has most of the say so over a company uh, bigger than equity shareholders or stock investors is the people that uh, these companies owe debt to. So he was on both sides of it. So he had full control of the companies and then he just started liquidating the assets. Like we talked about, started selling off, you know, their name brands of like uh, Craftsman uh, Tools. You know, they had kitchenware set uh, brands and different things like that. Just like, you know, Lowe's Home Depot, they got their own little specialty brands, whatever. They, he sold those all assets off to pay the debt obligation, which was happened to be to his hedge fund and stuff like that. But was on to your original question of how how can it happen? How can they be around for hundreds of years? It's because they dropped the ball. They wasn't paying attention to what was really going on. Um, you know, once you've been around for a certain amount of time, you get you get an ego or you get um you get you get full of yourself. You know, you think that, oh, I'm here, I've been here for this long, people will still come, customers will still come, and we can still do what we've been doing. And we will still get the same or better results. But the truth is, in time, if you don't, if you're not growing, you're dying in business world. So if you're just staying stagnant and just going on with life and and not paying attention to what's going on around you or think everything is fine, then you have the things like the Walmarts, you know, up and coming Walmart can come and take over your market share. You can have things like Amazon and and um what's another? What's the other Etsy and all these things come in and take over? Uh, as you know, Kmart never adapted to online. It was almost out of the game before they went online. They never adapted to online. They never re really refurbished their stores. Their stores looked like they were still in the 1980s when we was in the 2000s. So they were just comfortable with doing almost nothing and still thought customer rules were going to arrive. And then once you, once you lose that status symbol or if you're not if you're not in people's, uh, you know, forward thoughts of their mind, people forget about you and then they move on. And that's just like if we're talking about, you know, shoes that just like Fila, Reebok and stuff like that. The reason why Nike still is still on the forefront all these years later is because they keep rebranding themselves. They keep reminding people that they're out there. They're still doing commercials. When was the last time you seen a Reebok commercial? When is the last time you seen a Puma commercial, a Vans commercial or anything like that? It's these companies get older and older and just like old grumpy man, they uh they think that they don't have to stay abreast of the times. They just keep doing what they've been doing. Mm. All right. All right. The, I already I also had like another question. It was like Walmart's like an old company like Kmart. And why didn't the same thing happen to Walmart like Kmart did? Was it because like Walmart's this there's some like different things or something. Okay. So I think Walmart actually faced that threat against Amazon. And uh, because the rise of Amazon started to really change the game of sales and retail greatly. Um, and it was so bad that, um, you know, a lot of companies, I mean, Amazon was literally had putting companies out of business. And the only way for them to stay in business is they sell on Amazon's platform. I mean, Amazon really started to grow and put a control on everything. And Walmart faced that threat because they hadn't implemented e-commerce. And as we can see with Amazon, you know, they're now in, I think it's like two thirds of every American household. And just because of e-commerce, because you have such a great reach and they have no physical locations. Walmart has all the physical locations and they still couldn't compete with that. So now that Walmart started to implement e-commerce and it has been very efficient as well. And they've kind of copycatted the same format where sellers can go on Walmart, just like you can sell on Amazon. Uh, it's brought a lot of attention to new business, uh, you know, e-commerce business owners and stuff to start to really bring attention to the Walmart space. All right. And um, I Alex, those that's good points, but it's not a but. I was gonna say but, but meaning what you said wasn't true. Those are good points, flat out. Period. The other part I want to add to that is, you said it was all about adaptability. Kmart never adapted to the onslaught of Walmart. They never adapted to the onslaught of anything. They just was stagnant. In Walmart's case. Um, they had they had the big push from they had the big push from Amazon that was taking a lot of market share. But Walmart, they seen the competition coming and then they adjusted it. They went and bought the online retailer jet.com and then they 
they started competing in that space of, you know, and it's a little bit different than Walmart also because, I mean, Amazon also because people can go on the uh, Walmart <clears throat> website and sell their stuff and then Walmart is getting a lower percentage than, you know, Amazon. So they competed that way. It took them a, long, a little bit of time to get that generating. But then what else did Walmart do? Walmart uh, brought in the oh, we can have people shop for you and we can just, you can just drive your car up and we'll fill your car up for you. So they brought another element to the game. So you saw, you remember uh, Amazon bought Whole Foods, you know? <coughs> so, you know, Walmart and Super Walmart, they had the grocery store and then the, you know, everything else section. So Amazon's answer to that was to buy Whole Foods, but it didn't create, you know, the Amazon stores and things like the Amazon Go or whatever those little stores was called. But the thing is, is, the the one the one part that Walmart has over Amazon and there's only one to me. I mean, besides, I mean, groceries, yeah. But the one part is, <clears throat> it's still a lot of people that has a I want it now attitude. Amazon is some item that you can get same day, or you know, overnight or whatever if you pay for it. But in most areas in the United States. You can drive right there now and get it right now. And a lot of people have that I want it now attitude. That is the thing that I think, well, you know, on top of Walmart adding the online presence and then, you know, the the delivery or mobile pickup or whatever that stuff is called. That's what level that brought them back on par with Amazon. When Amazon was taking the market share, I think that those uh, items brought Walmart back back on a level playing field with the Amazon. And actually, I think it put them a little leg up because it's a lot of people with that I want it now attitude and they can't wait the you know couple hours or days it might take for something to be delivered. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Is that, that your last question? Yeah, that was my last question. Okay, do you got any other questions about anything else we've got these that we didn't go over? No, all my questions have been answered. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Please like, subscribe. Um you know, hit the comment section if it's different topics that you want to hear from the youth movement. Again, we're going to try to have people from the uh, youth, you know, youth meaning younger than Alex. You know, I already know I'm old as dirt, but they'll be younger than Alex. Uh, youth movement come in and ask questions and we're trying to get questions going. We, I don't know, we haven't came up with the title of it, but we'll try to bring this uh, as often as we can, you know. So submit your questions if you you know, we love to discuss these questions over YouTube and push this uh, content out to as many people as there is. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank Masone for coming with the questions. Uh, I like the fact that you had the, I mean, the insight, because it was unprovoked by me. So you had the insight to even look at something like Kmart and just wonder how how that all came about. I mean, I know it was a store that you, you like, but how it all came about to get to you know, a store that you used to go into to now no longer existing. So just the ability to think about those things and wonder how it happens. That's the first real part of finance and just, I mean, not financing, finance period in general, <laughs> uh, finance in general to see how those things work. And then you will start learning to question more things and it will make your attitude in finance go a long ways. And then you're going to have all the money and I'm going to to borrow some. <laughs> All right, so thanks. Right. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.